So in one of my previous videos, I talked about my experience with Bolt, which is Unity's visual scripting system. And I feel like a lot of people clicked on that video expecting a tutorial. It was recommended to me that I make a tutorial on how I actually went about remaking Flappy Bird with Bolt, so I thought I would do that. So I'm going to start off by clicking new. The version I'm using for Unity is right here. There's probably newer versions out, but I have not installed the latest. So this is the version I'm using. You should be fine if you're using pretty much any version of Unity near here. The template will be 2D, and I'll just name it Flappy Bird. So once you've created your project, the first thing we're going to need is to install Bolt. Bolt does not come pre-installed. It's a plugin you can download in the Package Manager, which is under the Window tab. Scroll down and you can see Package Manager. Now to see what packages you have installed, you can go to your My Assets and then it'll bring up all the packages you've installed. I've already installed and updated Bolt. If it's not here, then you may need to go to the Unity Registry and you can look it up in the search bar. When you do find it, go to the Bolt tab, go down to the right, click Download. And once that's finished downloading, you just click Import. This pop-up will appear and all you gotta do is click Import again. So now you can see down in the assets window, you'll see a little install bolt folder. What you're going to want to do now is go to the tools tab up top, click it, and then click the install bolt. This window will pop up again, just click import. When it's finished importing, this little setup wizard will appear for bolt. And this is basically exactly what it says, it's a setup wizard. Click next, and then there's two options you got here, human naming and programmer naming. Essentially, what the programmer naming is, is the names of all the blocks are exactly what they would look like if you were programming in C Sharp. So, in C Sharp, you would type out, for example, right here, transform.position if you wanted to get an object's position. And it would look just like that in Bolt. It would, there would be a block that would just write out transform.position. But in the human naming tab, they tried to simplify it to make it easier for someone who's not used to C Sharp. So in this case, for transform.position, it's transform and then a colon and get position to basically tell the programmer you're getting the position of the object's transform. For the purpose of this video, I'll go with human naming so it's easier to understand. Then you'll see this assembly options. This, you don't have to mess with. You can just click next. This basically displays all the names that will be on the blocks. For example, at the top, it's showing that integer will be displayed whenever a integer value needs to be typed in instead of displaying int. Once this all looks fine, which it should be, just click generate. When the setup's complete, just click close and we are ready to start programming in Bolt. Now we're going to need to start importing our assets. So in the description I have put a link. This link will take you to a page where you can download the assets to Flappy Bird. This is what the folder will look like and there's a bunch of files in here. You don't need to mess around with these three, but what we're going to need to pay attention to is the sprites for now. As you can see, this is the majority of the sprites in Flappy Bird. The one we're going to need is one of these bird sprites. I'll be using this little yellow guy down here, as this is the kind of the default bird. Just drag him into your assets. You can see he's right here. So all we're going to do next is drag the bird into our project window. We'll see him here. I'll rename him to bird. And you can see he's kind of small, so we can resize him. Go to the scale tool up here, and we can kind of bring him up. He can look at the right side to see if he matches the correct size. And you can see if we zoom in, he's kind of blurry. We don't want this, so what we can do is we can go down to the little asset down here. And, and at the filter mode, where it says bilinear, we're going to change that to point. So now the pixel art looks nice and sharp. And before you click off, make sure you click apply. That way it applies, it changes. I'm just going to center the bird on zero on the y-axis. And on x, I got negative 6.67. You can copy these if you want. I'm actually going to bring this up a little further. So in Flappy Bird, the main mechanic is you click your mouse or you tap your screen and the bird floats. It flaps. So we're going to want to mimic this, but we're not going to create a C-sharp script. Usually you'd click add component. You can type in like movement, new script, and then it'll create a script with that name. But we don't want to do this. Instead, we're going to go down to the bolt tab and we're going to click flow machine. Now the flow machine is 
the programming workspace for Bolt. This is where you're going to be doing all of your programming and we'll see that in a second. When you click Flow Machine, it adds two components. We got the Flow Machine and then Variables. This is where you're going to be creating all of your variables, where you're going to be putting your integers, your floats, booleans, pretty much anything. If you're creating a variable, it's going to go in this component. So to create a Flow Machine, we will click New right next to Macro. It'll pull up a window. This is where all the assets are going. And we can just type in bird movement and click save. You can name that to whatever you want, but that's what I'm aiming it for the purpose of this. So you want to open it. You click on the asset. You can click edit graph. This window will pop up and then you can dock it to wherever you want. So in the workspace, there are two blocks. We got the start event and the update event. This is exactly like in a C sharp script. Whenever you create a C sharp script, two default events will be in the script, the start event and the update event. Whatever's in the start event will play at the beginning of when the object is created. The update event will play every single frame. So if you want something to loop or check every frame, this is where you're gonna put it. In this case, we want to check if the player clicks his mouse button. So we're gonna put that under the update event. But first, if you notice, we're gonna play the frame and nothing's gonna happen. Our bird's just kind of sitting here, so we need to add some physics. To do this, we're gonna go back to our scene tab, click on the bird, and in the components, we're gonna add a rigid body 2D. This rigid body 2D component will calculate all the physics we're gonna need for the bird. So now if we click the play button, you will see the bird fall right down. For the purpose of this, I'm going to turn on auto mass and then I'm going to mess around with the gravity scale. I'll put in 5 for now and see if that looks good. After messing around with it, I'm going to go with a 3 on the gravity scale. And we can always change this as we continue working on the game. So now we're going to need to make the bird actually flap. So in this case, we're going to go back to our flow graph. And now in the update event, what we can do, what we can do is we can drag out this little arrow. And you, everywhere you see this little arrow, that's pointing down the flow of the code. Everywhere you see an arrow, you can drag it out and you can add a block to show what comes next in the code, to basically what shows what occurs next. So at the beginning of the update event, we're going to want to check for the player's mouse, specifically if his left button is clicked down. So in C sharp, we would type if and then input dot get mouse button down. So we're gonna need an if block. The if block in Bolt is not called an if block though. It's under the control panel and it's called a branch block. This is our if block. We can see it takes in a little Boolean value here and then it'll output this way if this Boolean value is true and it'll output this way if this Boolean value is false. You also notice that these little circles are color coded. If it's purple, that means it's a boolean. So we can drag out this boolean value here. And now we can look for the mouse. So it's under input. That's where if you're taking in input from the keyboard or the mouse, it's under input. So we can type in input and it'll kind of look through the entire database of code. We can just type in get mouse button. So in this case, we're gonna want get mouse button down, and it says on the bottom, you can see it gives a little summary on what this piece of code does. And in this case, this returns true during the frame, the user presses the given mouse button, which is exactly what we're gonna need. Now you may notice down here, the blue, that's either an integer or a float, it's some sort of number. So in this case, this is zero. In this case, it is set to zero. This is what we want. Zero refers to the left mouse button, while if we type in a one here, now it'll look for the right mouse button. In this case, we just want the left mouse button, so we're going to keep that at zero. Now, we're going to want to change the bird's velocity to make it flat, which means we want to set its Y velocity somewhere positive so it goes up whenever we click the mouse button. So in this case, we want it to, when it returns true, we're going to want to set the velocity, and the velocity code is under the object's rigid body component. So in this case, if we want to find the object's rigid body component, like it is right here, we want to go to the top. This is the bird game object. This is where all the components over here are going to be found. So we're going to click bird, and then we're going to find its rigid body 2D. 
and now we can see all the rigid body 2d components but we can look f we can specifically look for velocity so now right at the top rigid body set velocity we don't actually want to use this one if it just says rigid body that means it's rigid body 3d we don't want to use this instead we want to use rigid body 2d which is the correct rigid body component because we're working in 2d so we're going to click that now you can see it has two values well actually three inputs so this right here this if it has this little symbol that means rigid body that it'll take in any rigid body variable right here or game object down at the bottom here this takes in a vector 2 input which means it takes in an x coordinate and a y coordinate in this case we don't want the x coordinate to move at all when we click instead we want the y coordinate to change so i'll set that to something like five so now when we press play we can check to see if it works i'll keep clicking now we can see our birds moving it's moving up whenever we click however it's not moving too much so i'm gonna change this value around this feels like a really good value eight seems like a pretty good value for this and you can see on the left hand side in the flow graph you can see the code working that's what i kind of like about the flow graph that you don't really get in c sharp is you can see whenever i click the mouse button you can visibly see when it's returning true and you can see the little rigid body set velocity component glow up whenever i click my mouse button to represent the bird actually jumping so we don't need to mess around with this for a while this seems pretty good until we need to start calculating game overs now that we have the bird movement done i think i'm going to end this video here and make a part two tackling the movement of the pipes and i'll make a small series showcasing the creation of flappy bird using bolt if you haven't already please like and subscribe because that's always cool thanks for watching and i will see you later